Our students, however, weren't just focused on the pandemic this past year. Our PhD student, Heather Nimagata, has been named a Jonas Scholar um, this year. So for the next two years, she'll be funded by a Jonas Philanthropies grant to study societal factors affecting racial and ethnic disparities in cancer care for veterans. Also this year, the work of some of our DMP students, Emma Owens, Anna Babalis, and Michelle Sequist, resulted in new legislation passed in Illinois that will allow healthcare workers to treat sex partners of patients diagnosed with the STI trichomoniasis. That's a mouthful. Um, until this law, it was only legal for clinicians to provide what's called expedited partner therapy in cases of chlamydia and gonorrhea. Over more than um, two years, these students work with their state representative, Ann Williams, to write, introduce, and advocate for this passage of the bill. So this is quite an accomplishment for students. This is great. We're also um, proud of some of our faculty in another area of legislation. Rebecca Bortman, who is an assistant professor in our Springfield campus, provided research to support and then worked with Illinois legislators to prepare a bill that requires hospitals and ambulatory surgery centers in the state to ensure the elimination of surgical smoke plumes in the operating rooms. Um, this is important because studies have really shown that surgical smoke can contain transmissible viruses and bacteria, as well as toxic gases in the OR to both the clinicians and the patients there. Um, so passing this piece of legislation was absolutely essential and a, a really important piece of work. And again, that was spearheaded by Rebecca Bortman, one of our Springfield faculty. I'm also really proud to um, have recently announced that Professor Kylie Lease received a $7.1 million PCORI grant to, um, for a maternal healthcare program developed by UIC researchers in partners with the Melanated Group Midwifery Care, um, which is a nonprofit that is founded by one of our alumni, Carrie Stewart. The team project is part of a study to compare usual maternity care received by most people to a new care model that combines strategies to improve Black people's experiences and outcomes during pregnancy and postpartum with the hopes of reducing maternal mortality. This is really, really crucial because we know that compared to white women, black women are four times more likely to die from complications related to pregnancy or birth. So this, this grant, the $7.1 million grant will be hugely important um, in hopefully trying to find ways, interventions that as a nursing community, we can implement um, to try and reduce that morbidity and mortality. In addition, um, 90 UIC nursing students were awarded scholarships for more than $5,000 each for the current academic year, thanks to two grants, one by clinical assistant professor from Rockford, Kelly Rosenberger, along with clinical professor Valerie Gross here in Chicago. Both grants are from HRSA, or the Health Resources and Services Administration. The first one provided $2.2 million in funding, and it will be directed towards recruiting and supporting students for work in underserved and in rural communities. So this is, again, really important. And the second grant will create and implement a program to diversify geriatric nursing. Um, so both uh, Kelly and Valerie are working really hard on these, and our, our students will benefit as well as the community. In addition, this year, we celebrated the induction just last Saturday, actually. Um, we were commenting, some of us saw each other in Washington, DC at this event. Um, Cynthia Handrup as a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing. Cynthia is now the 30th active um, or emeritus faculty member here at UIC to become a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing. This is one of the highest honors that nursing gives. We also celebrated three of our alumni at the Academy meeting. Carolyn Hayes, who is a 1988 graduate of our master's program. Monique Reed, who earned her PhD, PhD here in 2011. And Linda Ehrlich-Jones, who earned her PhD here in 2001. And I know Linda is here, so let's give a big round of applause to Linda. In addition, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the American Association of Nurse Practitioners inducted two of our faculty members into their academy. Um, Carolyn Dickens, 
who's sitting right over there. Let's give Carolyn a big round of applause. As well as Lauren Deagle Basic, who is another one of our faculty. So you can see that the faculty that we have on um, here at UIC is just tremendous and they're being recognized nationally and internationally for their expertise. So while COVID dominated the news in 2020, we can't forget the racial unrest that culminated during last summer, or the summer before last, I should say. Since then, our college has redoubled our commitment to support black and underrepresented students um, and nurses. Earlier this year, two of our faculty members, Phoenix Matthews and Natasha Crooks, published a call to action in the Journal of Medical Ethics, highlighting the historical issues that impact research involving black populations and provided real concrete recommendations for researchers to ethically engage black populations in research. So again, this is an important, important piece of work for which they highlighted trust was a really important issue, gaining people's trust. Within the college, we implemented a 15 week group mentorship program to support students who are of racial and ethnic minorities, as well as those who are first generation and LGBTQ. Also, after recently seeking and winning $225,000 in grants, Gwyneth Milgraf, who is the director of our Midwest Nursing History Research Center, will be working with partners to assemble the history of how COVID-19 pandemic has disproportionately affected Black communities in Chicago. And she'll be creating exhibits of the work of Black nurses in Chicago using um, some of our existing archival collections and by conducting oral histories with uh, Black nurse, nurses. So these are really exciting and innovative um, steps forward. As you may know, our college and university continues to be engaged in the Ignite, which is the campaign for UIC. With just over a year to go in the campaign, our goal of raising $33 million actually really seems within reach. Um, while all gifts have made a strong positive impact during the campaign, I just wanted to share a few of the major gift highlights um, over the last year. This last year, we secured a $2 million gift from Steve and Kathy Irwin to establish the Kathleen M. Irwin Endowed Chair Professorship in Outstanding Nursing Practice honoring Kathy's dedicated career as a nurse. There's two reasons that I think this is really, really extraordinary. We believe that this is one of the nation's first endowed positions at a research one institution, which we are, for nursing faculty who are engaged in clinical practice, helping us emphasize our mission that puts both research and practice on equal footing. Secondly, Steve was an alumnus, but Kathy was not an alumna of our college. They chose UIC because of our reputation and our efforts to produce nurses who go on to shape the profession. So that's really, that's really something to have that kind of reputation that we get such an endowed professorship uh, named in somebody who didn't even graduate from our, our college. So that's really remarkable. We were also honored to receive a million dollar gift from former professor Karen Holm and her late husband, Terrence, to support the Midwest Nursing History Research Center. This gift will create both an endowed professorship and an unrestricted fund to support the varied initiatives within the History Center. Uh, Karen has a keen understanding of how useful it is to learn from the past. And these gifts, especially the endowed scholar, will help us attract new scholars to study nursing history and really move this science forward and within our center. Another gift came from uh, Dean Emerita Misha Kim and her husband, Hoon Su. Dr. Kim made the gift three years ago that established the Misha Kim Faculty Research Award. And this gift adds to that fund, elevating the position of the um, Hoon Su and Misha Kim Endowed Faculty um, Award to a faculty scholar. So the endowed um, position will bear the name of Misha Kim who's known worldwide in the field of nursing science. And I think it'll be an incredible tool for our college to be able to use in recruiting and retaining really expert faculty. We also have now distributed the first awards from our Dean's Faculty Catalyst Fund established by a group of UIC nursing alumni, donors and friends who wanted to give the Dean access to philanthropic funding for use in attracting and retaining key faculty. Uh, those faculty recipients are Dr. Valerie Gruss, 
Dr. Sue Kilroy and Dr. Pam Martin Namib. Um, this is actually the first announcement of, of those awards. They'll be going out to the, to the faculty um, in the next couple of weeks. We've also received some awards that impact student scholarships, which are really important to our students. One came from UI Health Midwifery Practice um, it, with giving led by midwifery alumni Kathy Harmon and Madalena Bushemi. The first award from this fund established, um, was established to support midwifery students from underrepresented backgrounds. And this year was awarded to Jamie Henderson, a DMP student who works in full-time labor and delivery at Advocate Trinity Hospital in Southeast Chicago. Another gift that we received was from Tom and Sherry Mendelson. And this gift was for PhD awards for students who are so versioning neuroscientists that they can give them some help in completing their dissertation work. So Sherry Mendelson is an alumna who says that working as a nurse science in Providence Holy Cross Medical Center in Mission Hills, California has renewed her appreciation for how much support nurse researchers need, need in order to move evidence-based practice forward. Lastly, I'm grateful for the multitude of gifts of our College of Nursing Annual Fund and Nursing Scholarship Fund which provide unrestricted dollars to invest in faculty, in student scholarships, and operations not only in Chicago, but in all our campuses across the state. All told, we're very lucky to have the support of alumni, donors, and friends like you via gifts of all shapes and sizes who are propelling our Ignite campaign forward and really fueling the mission of our college for education, research, and service. Um, your generosity really helps us fulfill that, that, miss it, that mission. So as, um, as the Ignite campaign continues into the home stretch, I encourage all of you today to continue giving or perhaps make your first gift to the college to support our students and faculty. We do recognize because of you, our alumni, that we're really strong today because of you. As you make your mark across the state, the country, and the world, you propel our reputation of UIC nursing as a place of rigorous scientific thought and highly skilled, compassionate clinical care. And for that, we, we really thank you. And I hope you'll continue to spread the good word about UIC, um, its excellence to all your friends and your family and your colleagues. We would really appreciate that. Now, it's my honor to, and privilege to introduce the, introduce the honorees for our 2021 Alumni Awards Program. We begin our awards presentation with the Outstanding Alumni Achievements Award, which recognizes alumni who have built extraordinary careers of meaningful and measurable accomplishments. And we're happy to recognize today three winners for this significant award. Dale Beatty is the Chief Nurse Executive and Vice President for Patient Care Services at Stanford Healthcare in Palo Alto, California, where he leads a team of 3,000 nurses and meets monthly with 400 frontline clinical staff about patient care issues. When he started there in 2017, he brought with him more than 15 years of experience as a chief nursing officer in high-performing organizations, including our own UI Health. He has extensive experience with the American um, nursing Credentialing Center Magnet Recognition Program and is board certified as a nurse executive advanced by AMCC. He is also certified as a Caritas coach by the Watson Caring Science Institute. Dale is a board member for the Association of California Nurse Leaders and this year he was recognized among U.S. News and World Report's top 15 hospital chief nursing officers. So I introduce you to Dr. Dale Beatty. Well, thank you so much. Uh, when I reflect, I, I don't know what happened to 35 years of my career. It went so quickly uh, uh, along the way, but I did want to reflect a little bit about what did I learn along the journey that maybe I could share with you. And one was when I started the, my career uh, back in the 80s, 
uh, I, I went into a nursing program and I was the only male in the program. Uh, and I was looking at the, the brochure and it looked very similar to the class that I went into. Uh, very little, 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 very little diversity and very few men. But I got to experience through that experience what it was like to be the only. And it made me self-conscious and it made me insecure. Uh, but through that insecurity, uh, I found out who I was. Um, and I was afraid of that. I thought people are going to know who I am because I'm in this nursing program. In fact, I didn't even share with my father that I was going into the nursing program. And when I did, he said to me, well, you can do what you want, uh, but you're not going to have a professional career. Uh, and I love my father to death. This was the 80s. Uh, and he, he was limited in his knowledge, just like we all learn and have our own biases. And our, our goal is to really help each other along the way. And I really mentioned uh, this. And then I think about my journey to Stanford. And again, the voices come in your head. Maybe you're not good enough. Maybe you don't have what it takes. Uh, and we all get those kinds of messages. And I would just encourage you all to think about pushing those messages to say, to say you are good enough and maybe you are the only. But in this world of diversity, equity, inclusion, we must help and advance one another as we move forward. The second thing I would say, be fascinated, explore uh, in your career. And I know when I look at my colleagues and friends here, that certainly has taken place. I went to Northwestern originally 15 years of my career there, and I had the diversity of being able to do critical care, surgical services, emergency trauma services, business development. And it gave me the breadth and depth to explore some different experiences that really were foundational for my career. And then second, I just want to mention UIC. And one of the things someone asked me recently is, what do you think the weakness of your career was, has been? And I would say my weakness is I didn't have the good fortune to come to UIC at the very beginning of my career. <laughs> and I mean that, you know, when I came to UIC, I thought I was coming to check the box to say I had a doctorate degree. And what I found was a professional journey like no other. I absolutely loved it. And I had so many mentors and friends helping me along the way. And I found myself in a professional puzzle of engagement that I, I didn't expect and anticipate. And I went to great undergrad and, and uh, master's programs early uh, in the 80s and 90s. But I found myself in a doctor program in my 50s. Uh, and I learned that some of my foundation of my knowledge was not correct or accurate. And it had to be deconstructed and rebuilt. And I'm grateful to the UIC uh, for the opportunity. It changed my professional career, my professional um, identity in so many ways and opened up a world uh, that I would never have imagined it would have. And so I'm extremely grateful for that experience um, along the way. And I learned one of the opportunities from all of this is that we all need to stretch ourselves, both professionally and academically to go beyond our comfort level. Uh, and it's very, very important. The third thing I would say is find friends and colleagues and mentors and be involved in professional organizations. What I've learned in this business is you don't have all the answers. In fact, you probably only have about 10% of them, but there's other people that do. Uh, surround yourself with other people. They will help you. They will give you the voice and the answers along the way. That's incredibly important. I want to mention Ann Bolger at Northwestern, who was my original mentor that told me, make sure you're going to something, not from something. Sue Derberg from North Shore, who was a CNO at, uh, for many, many years. I was under her leadership and mentorship for a period. And I said to her, Sue, I really love what your style is. I really love you. I'm going to be just like you. She said, don't do that. You have to find your own style, your own identity, be your own self. Um, and then uh, finally, Dr. Jean Watson, who's been a tremendous mentor to me. Uh, to, to, in the world of caring science and how to actualize that in your nursing philosophy and the work that you do on a day-to-day -day basis has really changed my career and also uh, my, my personal life as well. And then finally, I would say, have fun along the way. You know, I am so grateful that I had to uh, push the fear away and went into a profession that I have absolutely loved every single day. It's hard sometimes, we all know, but I have loved it. And I'm grateful to the UIC uh, for helping me along the way in the journey. It's an absolute pleasure. I thank you for the award and I thank you for the privilege of standing in front of you today. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Dale. I think your, your parting message about being joyful throughout our career is really important, particularly at this particular point in time where we are in history.
So our next recipient is Timothy Kerrigan, CNO and Vice President of Patient Care Services at Loyola University Medical Center. There during the pandemic year, Tim led Loyola to a 25% improvement in, in its nursing sensitivity quality indicators, measurable links between patient outcomes and nursing care. In 2015, Tim received the Chicago Health Executive Forum's Early Career Healthcare Executive Award. And three years later, he was named to the Illinois Nurses Foundation list of 40 under 40 emerging nurse leaders. Wouldn't many of us still like to belong to that 40 under 40? <laughs> Last year, he was named Chicago's Crane Notable LGBTQ Executive, and he's currently president-elect of the Illinois Organization of Nurse Leaders. Please welcome to the podium, Dr. Timothy Kerrigan. Well, first, thank you uh, to the UIC community, the alumni board, Dean Collins, and all of the faculty of UIC that helped shape me during my time here. Um, it, it's been a bit of a walk down memory lane. I uh, walked into these doors for the first time about 20 years ago. It was January of 2002. It was a very cold day. I remember it clearly. And I was incredibly nervous. I was, had been a nurse for less than a year at the time and um, knew that I wanted to go to graduate school. Didn't quite know where I would end up. Um, and I am so thankful that um, I did take that leap and, and begin my journey at UIC early in my career as it has certainly created the foundation for um, my both academic and professional career. Um, some, some things that have you know, uh, come through my mind as I was thinking about this event, walking into these doors again today, um, it was really reflective on what this experience um, and obtaining a PhD from, from University of Illinois College of Nursing meant to me. And of course, there's the, um, the knowledge gain that you get. Statistics, philosophy, research design, methodology, um, all of the things that you learn to do um, from writing, reading, influencing others, working in teams, um, and those have all been invaluable experiences to me that I continue to use um, in every role, role that I've had since then. But a theme that kept coming into my mind and in fact has come up numerous times today is that of um, role modeling, networking, and building relationships. And those relationships can take the form of friendship, um, of a phone a friend um, for advice, or that of mentorship. Um, and I, as I have reflected on folks that I have met or have become part of my life, my professional and personal life, um, many of them were sparked by um, the, the UIC community. Um, I was a staff nurse as a new graduate nurse at University of Illinois. Um, Jan Spunt was the first person that hired me into a leadership role in 2006. Um, Dale Beatty was the president of IONL at one point um, and has been a person that I've used um, for advice and for um, a variety of professional questions over the years. But there's many others too, and I'll just mention a, a few of them. Um, my very first academic advisor here, Dr. Marianne Anderson, is the person who um, interviewed me and was a mentor of mine in a basic science lab when I thought that that was the type of career that I would be looking to, um, to pursue. And when it wasn't, she was the person that helped connect me to um, another person, also named Marianne, Dr. Marianne Anderson, uh, Dr. Barb Berger, Dr. Mark Foreman, Dr. Patrick Robinson, a whole variety of folks um, that I continue to keep in touch with and continue to have helped shape my life. So um, I was glad to hear during the panel this morning the theme of uh, mentorship um, and connections and relationships, as I do believe. Um, in addition to the formal academic um, knowledge that I gained in the PhD curriculum here, um, probably in fact more important was the relationships um, that have turned into a lifelong 
um, journey for me. Um, so again, I am so thankful to the, the UIC community for this award. I'm grateful to have it, and I'm so proud to be an alumni. Congratulations, Tim. I think uh, our gathering today is a tribute to the importance of relationships. All of you being here um, really speak to how important it is to maintain those professional relationships. But also I can just see by looking at many of you, you've developed um, deep friendships through this alumni um, group. So our third year, our third winner, excuse me, of this year's Outstanding Alumni Achievement Award is Sandra Martell public health administrator of the Winnebago County Health Department. Since the spring of 2020, an enormous part of Sandra's job has been to lead the county, which includes Rockford, through the COVID-19 pandemic, educating residents on public health guidance and making public health policy decisions. You've had your hands full, Sandra. <laughs> Beyond the pandemic, Sandra faces numerous unique challenges in her county that serve urban, suburban, and rural populations. To tackle these um, facilitates cross-agency collaboration on issues such as the opioid epidemic and the movement towards becoming a trauma-informed community. It's difficult to imagine what her job and life have been like these 20 months or so. So right now we welcome Dr. Sandra Martel. Congratulations. Well, as I've listened to my esteemed colleagues come up ahead, you obviously can tell I have a very different career path. Um, I got the bite for being a public health nurse here in the city of Chicago as a visiting nurse. I did a lot of maternal and child health care and really kind of formed my commitment to issues of social justice and health equity very early on in my career. And so when I reflected on who all my mentors were, it's kind of hard to even pinpoint one or two by name. I think of the visiting nurses I met. We talked a little bit earlier this morning about LPNs returning. The first people that helped me learn my job in the field were those LPNs that helped me know my job. I think about my experiences at Cook County Health and Hospital System in the Cook County Health Department. I see some of my colleagues there and all the transformation that we have gone through in terms of public health and the expectations. And certainly I wanna acknowledge my colleagues over in the School of Public Health, because when we think about what public health is, which really are the collective actions we do to make the conditions in which people can be healthy. And this has been a year that has challenged us at every level. And we have needed every single one of our nursing colleagues, whether it was in the acute care environments, taking care of the patients, whether it was in telemedicine, doing all the screenings, for us, it was our medical reserve corps. We called out, our nurses came to help us vaccinate. We were doing all of this. And at the same time, we are the most trusted profession to convey the truth of our science and our knowledge. And as we kind of go through, this will probably not be the first pandemic we see. And I'd like to say that we are going to be more prepared for the next one, but nurses will continue to fill a critical role. We serve as the leaders in our communities, we serve as the providers of care. We serve as the informal researchers. I think of all the questions, my mind spins about what will this be like following this? What will our timelines be like? What will healthcare delivery be like? What are the next skill set? And I kind of alluded to the fact that we had to learn how to pivot. We use that term a lot, change what we do, you know, be adaptable, flexible. What, you know, when you don't have gloves and everyone's been taught you're gonna wear gloves when you give vaccinations. What do you do? All of a sudden you have a non-medical person vaccinating side by side with you. What is critical information that to impart? What does a nurse do you delegate and always return back to you? So I came back to my passion, which has been really helping the community and inform the community about how they can make the changes needed to really make their conditions healthy because we really are all in this together. 
And I think that's the greatest gift when I think about my, really my doing my master's at the University of Illinois and my doctoral level, was I always kind of make a little joke. I did my undergrad at Loyola. So I always say I was educated by the Jesuits, but I was formed by the socialists. Because I think that that social commitment and, and commitment to health equity and justice are something that we as nurses with our diversity in practice, our diversity in culture, and our diversity in gender and everything else we talk about have the tools to make a difference as we move forward. Because it's no longer the medical model of care. It is a public health model of care. And so I, first of all, I wanna thank every one of you who has been a mentor in some way, shape or form to me, either through my classwork or maybe what I've read about you as I read through and I think, wow, I really need to think about that some more. I wanna really thank all the colleagues I've worked with throughout my career because every single one of you has taught me something. You've either, I'm gonna say challenged me or encouraged me. And both are necessary if we're going to advance in our profession, in our career and in our world. And so um, I have two close friends who have served as my mental health uh, kind of counselors throughout this because I think we talked this morning about the importance of that and about those relationships we develop not only within our career and profession, but outside people that can serve as sounding boards and encourage us along the way. So I thank you. I'm honored and humbled by the individuals who nominated me, and I'm very proud to be a UIC graduate. Thank you, Sandra. Um, I think we'd all agree the importance of public health and public health nursing has just been incredibly important, particularly for the last 20 months. This year, the college conferred its 43rd annual Distinguished Alumni Achievement Award to Dr. Tonda Hughes. Tonda's name and face is familiar to many of you. After earning her PhD here at the UIC College of Nursing, she joined the faculty and stayed full-time for 27 years before getting an offer she could not refuse to become, although we wish she had, but um, to become the Henrik H. Ben Dixon Professor of International Nursing at Columbia University. There she is also the Associate Dean for Global Health and Executive Director of the new Center for Sexual and Gender Minority Health Research. Tanda has had a distinguished research career focused on sexual minority women's mental health and substance use. Her pioneering studies on alcohol use among sexually minor, sexual minority women have received nearly continuous fund, funding since 1999, now in excess of $25 million from the National Institute of Health. She has more than 250 journal articles, book chapters, and other scholarly papers to her name, and has served as a consultant to many federal agencies that deal with substance use and mental health. Not only is Tonda still Professor Emerita here at UIC Nursing, but she holds or has held honorary appointments at other universities in places like Australia, England, and other places in the United States. Tonda became a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing in 2001, was inducted into the Chicago LGBT Hall of Fame in 2003, was inducted into the International Nurse Researcher Hall of Fame in 2015, and was elected as a fellow of the New York Academy of Medicine in 2019. We really would be here all day if I continued to list her accolades one by one, but I can say from firsthand knowledge that she is most deserving of this award. So please help me congratulate Dr. Tonda Hughes. <laughs> wow. Hello, everyone. It's uh, amazing to be here in the college and here on the third floor where I have spent countless hours over the years. You can just imagine. Um, I'm honored and privileged to have been selected for this year's um, Outstanding Alumni Award. I want to thank the Alumni Board and Jan Spunt, the president. I don't see her today, but 
uh, I, oh, thank you, Jan. Uh, I wanted to say thanks to Terry Weaver. I spent a number of years and traveled to a lot of countries with her. I imagine she's on a golf course somewhere now enjoying her retirement. But most of all, I wanna say thank you to Marianne Piano, my good friend, colleague, and PhD fellow who nominated me for this award. I'm really uh, very pleased. I also want to thank my PhD faculty mentors and, and colleagues who I learned so much from while I was here at UIC. When trying to think about what I should talk about, there are so many things, but I thought I would share with you one of my first memories of my PhD program. Um, it was the first week of the first semester, about midweek, and me and, and the other 13 of my cohort had been um, asked to introduce ourselves. God only knows how many times. Can you all remember that where you had to say hello and who you are and where you come from and all that. And we were in Myra Levine's philosophy of nursing course. And so I'd heard my colleagues say, you know, who they were and talk about their wives or their husbands and their kids and their pets. And I didn't have any of those things that people like to talk about, you know, normal people like to talk about. Plus, I was from Kentucky, and I was, already, you know, already feeling like an outsider. So when it came to me, I said, hello, I'm Tonda Hughes. I'm from Kentucky. And I had three kids, but I gave them away. <laughs> How many of you know Myra Levine? You know, a brilliant scholar, um, but, you know, a matronly, grandmotherly kind of person. Can you imagine the expression on her face when I said that? Not sure why I did it, but nervous, probably. <laughs> and, and she was quite relieved. It's the first time I ever saw her speechless, but she was quite relieved when I said, just kidding. <laughs> I, um, I chose to leave Kentucky to come to UIC for my PhD because of its very strong women's health program. I see some of my women's health folks here in the audience. At the time, it was probably the leading school in women's health. And I had the opportunity to study with people like Alice Dan and Beverly McElmurray and um, Denny Webster. I also had the opportunity to be with a group of women's health scholars uh, from the US and from internationally. I was buddies with Sheila Tulu from Botswana and Naima Agassir from Bahrain, uh, both of whom I've seen relatively recently before the pandemic. And so I, I gained so much from my time here and with the, spending time with them. I can't say that I wasn't intimidated when I came to Chicago. I didn't know much about Chicago. What I knew or thought I knew was about gangs and gangsters. That's a, you know, something that I think most people think about Chicago. But the PhD program provided so many opportunities for me. I, um, I was able to co-edit um, a book on addiction in the nursing profession. I was, I co-edited a special issue on women's health in nursing clinics of North America. I was associate editor for an in-house nursing journal called Women's Health Nursing Scan. I had so many opportunities. And I think I was, um, well, I know I was so fortunate because I may be one of the few people to finish their PhD without financial debt. And that was because of the opportunities that I had here, including a women's health and NIH women's health training grant. So I, I will forever be grateful to UIC, not only for what I learned, but for the opportunity to be here without incurring a, a, a huge debt. So as, as in part in my expression of gratitude, I, um, I want to pay it forward. And so this week I finished uh, made the last commitment to a scholarship that I'm uh, developing, forming, naming, uh, that will support a PhD student or PhD students who want to study sexual minority women's health. I've been doing research on lesbian and bisexual women's health since I started my faculty position here, even though my very well-meaning advisors in the beginning said, Tonda, you shouldn't do that, you know, 
you might not get publications. <laughs> I did, I was able to do that. Um, <laughs> you might not get grants, you might not get tenure, um, but I, I did. And I have to say, other than those sort of well-meaning uh, pieces of advice, I, I had nothing but support here at UIC for my work. So I'm very happy and I hope this scholarship can in some small way um, help to, to expand this field. I've been doing the work for a long time. The field has grown, but there's still very few nurses doing the work. So anyway, um, I'm so pleased uh, to receive this honor. And I just wanna say thank you again to the college, to the alumni board, and to all of my friends and colleagues here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So congratulations, Tanda, and I, I think I speak for all of us in saying thank you for your very generous gift, um, but also um, the importance of relationships. Um, each of the speakers that received awards here talked about the people they met here and the people that influenced their life, and that is just so important as we move forward, um, particularly as we emerge out of the pandemic and we reconnect. Um, those relationships are just incredibly, incredibly um, important. So let's have another round of applause for our award winners. And at this time, I'd like to turn the program over to Sarah Almasian, our Associate Director of Alumni Engagement and Participation to continue our recognition. All right, hello, hello again. <laughs> um, it's my pleasure to introduce those here who have joined us for a milestone anniversary of their graduation from UIC College of Nursing. Everyone who, yay, <laughs> everyone who graduated <laughs> in a year ending in six or one will receive a certificate either in person or for our Zoom folks um, in the mail following today's event. Those celebrating 10 years will also receive a special memento. And we're continuing our tradition. Uh, we started a few years ago, which is silver medallions for our 25th anniversary um, folks and gold medallions for our 50th uh, anniversary alumni. Uh, our silver and golden alumni will also receive their medallions in person today or via mail after today's event. So uh, when I call your name, please stand at your seat to be recognized and we will bring um, your certificate and or medallion to you. Uh, five years, we have Magdalena Alvarez on Zoom. And uh, Erin Farah, who's here. Oh, she had to leave. Oh, okay. Um, 10 years, uh, we have Timothy Kerrigan. We have Rosalia Gonzalez. I believe she had to change to Zoom, so she's here via Zoom. Uh, Krista Jones, who's here on Zoom. Uh, and Denise Kent, uh, he, who's here via Zoom as well. All right, so 20 years, uh, Linda Ehrlich Jones. All right. <laughs> Jennifer Junis, I believe she had to leave for her daughter's uh, 16th birthday. So Jennifer Junis, 20 years. Diane McNaughton, Nauten. And Daisy Sherry, who joins us via Zoom. All right, next we have our silver alumni who are celebrating 25 years. As the traditional silver anniversary, we mark this special milestone with a silver medallion. Uh, Gladys Canaval on Zoom. Rosalia Gonzalez also on Zoom. Marie Lindsay. Daisy Sherry again on Zoom. 
Susan Trella, also on Zoom, and Lori Quinn. <laughs> All right. From 25, we go to 40 years. We have Laura Quigley, who's here. Janet Stifter. Oh, she had to leave, okay. Uh, Jane Serwa via Zoom. Mickle Ward Ellison. Forty-five years. We have our morning panel uh, moderator, Sabina Dembrowskis. <laughs> All right. Finally, our fifty years. We are so honored to have eight golden alumni here, either in person or via Zoom. They are Joanne Hafner, Eunice Lasky, Margaret Bromberg. Francis Belmonte Mann on Zoom. And special thanks to Fran because she was my golden um, 50th class uh, class rep. She really helped spread the message to get our, our golden alumni here. Uh, Janice Miller via Zoom. Arlene Miller. Kathleen Sanez on Zoom. And Martha Weeks. But we do also have one more alumna to recognize who got her medallion when she joined us in 2018 for her 50th. She's here today celebrating 53 years. Shirley Nelson Rieger, please stand. <laughs> On behalf of Dean Collins and myself, I offer congratulations and cheers to all of our alumni today. When we conclude um, our luncheon portion, we will ask our 10 year silver 25th, um, I'm sorry, silver and golden alumni who are here today to join us at the front of the room um, for group photos. If you feel comfortable about getting close, we understand. Um, if any other small groups or individuals would like a special photo, um, please come forward or you can grab um, the attention of Mark Mershon, our excellent photographer over here. Um, but before that, I wanted to take a few mo moments to talk to you about um, what we do in the Office of Advancement here uh, within nursing. Um, as the name implies, our department's role is to build relationships with everyone from alumni to, to friends, the general public, um, to advance our institution in multiple ways. Our team works through uh, works toward that um, through three different strategies. Visibility, which is marketing and communications, um, alumni engagement, which is what you see here right now, uh, philanthropy, which means meeting donors who care deeply about nursing and matching them with meaningful opportunities to support and positively impact the profession that they love. So I have three requests of you today. First, uh, Dean Collins already mentioned this. We are in our last year of Ignite. Within Ignite campaign, the College of Nursing set an ambitious goal to raise $33 million. I'm happy to report that thanks to hundreds of donors among our alumni and friends, we are now feeling our goal is within reach. The flip side though is um, it becomes a little tempting to take the last stretch of the campaign for granted. So we really need your help to keep the momentum strong. In addition to substantially increasing faculty and capital resources, supporting nursing students is a top priority of our campaign. At the campaign's launch, our goal for the end of the campaign was to triple the number of students supported by philanthropic funds, mostly via scholarships and fellowships. Tripling the number would mean supporting 165 students on an annual basis. Uh, this year, we're at 138 students, which is great, but we wanna, we wanna go higher than that. 
Um, if you've already made an annual gift, please accept our heartfelt thanks. If you've not yet made a gave, gift, I encourage you to consider making one today, no matter what size. I hope you'll get into what we call a healthy habit of giving. Um, so that was my first request. Second request, please help us increase our visibility by spreading the word about UIC College of Nursing. Tell your colleagues, your neighbors, your friends, social media, word of mouth, anything, everything, um, just how special this college is. To help you, our office produces Vital Signs, our alumni magazine, which you should receive in a few weeks, either by mail or email. Um, in it, you'll find some of the great stories of impact being made by our alumni, students, and our faculty. Today, you've had a chance to hear from our alumni panelists, our alumni award winners, and our faculty. If this has made you feel extremely proud to be UIC nursing, please don't keep it a secret. Share, <laughs> share your alumni pride with as many people as possible, and together we can increase visibility for UIC College of Nursing. Third request, please consider getting more uh, engaged and involved with the college. This could mean many things, as I hinted earlier. Um, we're always looking for a diverse, 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 diverse group of alumni um, to serve on our alumni board. Um, last year, we launched a webinar series um, called On Duty. So please um, sign up for that. We have a few um, already like booked on the calendar. Our next one will be November 18th when alumna Ann Scott Blauen, founder and president of PSQ Advisory, um, and before that, uh, longtime vice president of the Joint Commission. Um, Ann will share her perspective on how nurses can influence healthcare governance. So visit our website, you click at alumni up at the top, and you can get all the details on that event. Um, and we're also entering the third year of our alumni mentor program. If you're a younger alum, um, would like to be mentored, or if you're even a more seasoned alum um, interested in sharing your expertise with younger alumni, we invite you to join the program uh, when our next invitation uh, comes around, which is in spring. You can also nominate your fellow alumni for awards that we celebrated today. Um, nominations are open now through February 1st. You'll find forms in the alumni section of our website. Um, you can also volunteer as a mock interviewer, um, sit on a professional panel, um, so there's many ways for you to get uh, involved. Um, so we encourage you to come to future events, uh, employment events, CEU presentations. Please spread the word to your fellow um, classmates, colleagues, and friends too. Um, there's just so many ways for you to get engaged with UIC College of Nursing. You can learn about all of them on our website, as I mentioned earlier, um, or you can stop me today. Um, my contact information is on the website as well. Um, I think that's it. Thank you very much for listening. Now I'll ask Dean Collins to come and close today's lunch. Thank you, Sarah. I have just a couple of more short notes before we conclude. First, I'd like to thank UIC College of Nursing Alumni Board Chair Yolanda Coleman and all the board members for their hard work in selecting our alumni award winners today. Thank you. Next, I would be remiss to close without acknowledging the hard work of my advancement team and all the work that they put into putting today together. Sarah, Sarah Elmas, oh, I'm gonna have to get this better, Elmasian for organizing the day and for her remarks here. Also the rest of the advancement team, Steve George, Caitlin Canatello, Liz Miller, Mark Mershon, Jennifer Samples, Katie Corboy, Deborah Ziff Soriano, Joanne Chappelle, and our student worker, Chiang Kim. Thank you very much. I have to tell you, I, I arrived here quite early this morning and I would looked around and the advancement team was everywhere. They were outside, they were inside setting things up. You just don't realize the amount of work that goes into an affair like today, so thank you again. Coming up next today is our afternoon reception where I look forward to talking with you um, and not from behind the podium. I hope today has made you feel both excited about your connection to our college and eager to be further engaged in our college. To learn more about what much of I've mentioned today and a lot more, please keep an eye on your email for the, again, the newest issue of Vital Signs Magazine, which will be coming out uh, late next month and visit our alumni pages to learn more about upcoming events. For guests who joined us by Zoom today, 
We wish you were here, uh, but appreciate your time and attention, and we hope that you will soon be able to join us in person as well. Thanks to all of you who participated in person today. It's been absolutely wonderful to spend this time with you, and I hope to see many of you a little bit uh, later at two o'clock in the reception outside. So thank you to all of you, and wherever you're headed now, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you.